Well, hello, hello, how's everyone doing on this fine Friday afternoon? As you can see, my time is Friday, July 28th, and it's afternoon time where I'm at, where I'm staying at, where I'm at. So today, like always, we're going to be talking about sports, anime, and also we're going to get look into houses or like the exterior or what the outside houses look like because that's what intrigues me or that's what interests me. We're gonna. That's what we're gonna be talking about today, um, and also I'll be giving out my review or discussing about the latest episode of JJK Jujutsu Kaisen. Uh, well, first we're gonna start off watching the video, and I'm gonna explain the video. It's from the last video. The audio didn't capture it properly. I'm gonna kind of go into it, but yeah, I'm getting. I'm starting to get used to or comfortable talking on the. Um, internet you could say or uh live streaming so first let's go and watch uh, uh, wow Yu-Gi-Oh 5D's opening intro I believe this intro is underrated it is an English version of the intro um I like how I said from my previous video I watched the previous video but the audio didn't capture it correctly and also i talked about how i also do want to do like rankings or tier lists of like uh possibly like jerseys or uh maybe players possibly anime or things or food chains things of that nature that's what i want to do in the future so actually let me do a clip real quick let me do a clip Uh oh clip yeah we're clipping this all right let's watch this not tense, but that song is fire for me. Okay, let me see how this clips work. Okay, um, ooh, remaining time to edit. Let's say you, gi, o, five D's theme. Let's see, ooh, a whole sixty seconds. Let's see. Oh, this is so cool. Wait, can I? This is my first time doing clips, so I don't. I have no idea what I'm doing. But I feel like, yo, let's do sixty seconds like that. Publish. Okay. Yeah. All right. This is my first time publishing a clip. I'm excited. Let's see how does this work. All right. Share clip. I really don't like how uh, Kick does this. This is really, really weird. Um, like this is my first time using a live stream platform. I never used um Twitch or any of the other live streams. Do all live streams work that way? Where well, you have to clip while you're actually live streaming, and then I guess have your audience. That is nuts. Wow. All right, then. Uh, that's weird. So let's get back because I do not want the audio for uh, these videos to be messed up. I'm going to try to figure out what's going on. Why is the audio messed up every time I upload a video or when I upload a video and when I'm talking for a while and then I play a video with audio, it messes up. So let's hurry up. Let's get through these videos with audios because I don't want to be messed up. Okay, so this is so wholesome. This young Buffalo Bills fan helped his sister meet her idol, Josh Allen. So let's watch the video. Yes, some wholesome, happy content because, you know, it's always good to have some happy content or like, a, you know, always not really a dose of happy content, but always get, you know, happiness or show happiness because there's a lot of depressing things that are going on, you know, it's great. 
<laughs> now, <laughs> I'll just space out for a second. But this next video is the Brazil soccer at its finest. Uh, Bia, can I pronounce her last name? But she makes it uh, three for Brazil. So I guess it's like three. Brazil scored three goals. But I just want to show you this clip because this is a great, like, soccer clip. Like the passing and the teamwork in this is phenomenal. So let's see it. I'm sure. Why? That is nuts. But luckily we did watch the clip before it did that to us. That is crazy. What's the next thing? What's the next thing? What's the next thing? But yeah, that's from the Women's World Cup. Hey, if the Women's World Cup is going on, go watch it. It's been pretty good. I don't care what people are saying about... It's talking nonsense about women's sport. I mean, Women's World Cup. Some people. I don't understand why. It, it, it's, it's great. But here's the next video. Sounds you probably grew up with. Childhood. Nostalgia. Nah, that's a little bit before my time. Yeah. Yeah, that's before my time. Bill, 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 Bill. Alright, that was that video, this nostalgia. Oh. P E. Yes, yes, yes. I just did that. Alright, next thing's that all the videos I have, because I want to get those out the way before audio messes up. Alright, oh, last thing. Alright, whatever, whatever. Kind of messed it up, messing it up. But okay, now I've already showed you, like, the gist of what we're going to be talking about. Like basically everything we're going to talk about because I, I want to get the videos out the way because like I said, the audio has been messing up. So I'm trying to get those out the way first. But so like I said, we're going to be talking about, oh no, why is this still up? Whatever. All right. We're going to be talking about sports, anime, and also houses with the outside of some houses look because that's interesting for me. That is. So I'm going to show this or this tweet. The MetLife Stadium will feature midfield logos that aren't the NFL Shield this season. So, MetLife and uh, it's in New Rutherford, New Jersey. I know it's in New Jersey, but I think Rutherford, Rutherford, Rutherford. I apologize for saying the city name wrong, but uh, the Giants and Jets play in the same stadium, and they. I don't know if it's true or not, but I've heard. Please. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I've heard that since they play on the same field, field, same turf, it's easier to just keep it the NFL emblem on the 50-yard line rather than every week or so or if there's a Monday night game and then Thursday. I know they schedule it accordingly, but some, if something happens like that, they just have the NFL logo, which represents all teams rather than, okay, uh, let's just have the Giants, and if something bad happens, or if a team needs to play in a different stadium, um, then we will, um, then it'll be fine, because it's the NFL emblem, or, you know, things like that, so, and, you know, it, and also, I'm pretty sure it's the, the main reason is the cost, because, um, you know, or time as well, because, you know, you have to get rid of that logo, put a new one next week or things like, you know, basically what I've been saying, I, I apologize. I'm kind of all over the place, but the main point I'm trying to get at is that it's probably because of cost and also time. That's why they have the NFL emblem. But this season they have it as, you know, their own team, lo team logos, which is nice, which is cool. This looks beautiful. I like this look. It looks nice. It looks unique. Not unique, but it's it's because we never, or I don't remember seeing 
Bad Stadium have this New York logo on it, which looks new and interesting, and you know the Jets as well. So, yeah, that's cool news. I'm happy for both teams. That's real cool. It looks nice. Next thing we're talking about, who is touching these records? So, ESPN posted this. It says, sports most unbreakable records. Jerry Rice, 22,895 career receiving yards. No one's going to break that. I, I've seen, like, the two other closest receivers I've got. I don't know if it's Randy Moss. And, um, I don't know if it's Randy Moss, Terrell Owens, or... I don't think Kevin Johnson is up there. Yeah, I don't think he's up there. I know he's probably up there in the receiving yards, but career receiving, I don't think so. And probably a few up. Anquan Bowden, maybe? I don't know. But, or Larry Fitzgerald. I know, but I'm just saying, the next person closest to that record is it, not even close. It was just the funny, funniest part. Because, you know, I'm saying the closest to that record, they're not even close to that. So, that record is probably unbreakable. Wayne Gretzky's. Uh, 1,963 career assists. Uh, I don't know much about hockey, but I assume that's not unbreakable. The uh, Cy Young, 749. Cy Young, the actual player, not the war. Uh, 749 complete games. That's definitely not going to be... that. No way. No one's touching that. No. Uh, Will Chamberlain, 50.4 points per game in a single season. It's funny because I guess someone can technically break if they play like three games or two games or even a game in a season. That'll be hilarious. Like, oh, this person break uh, uh, Will Chamberlain's point per game and single season record, even though they played such few games or um, things of that nature. Uh, but yeah, that's definitely not going to be breaking broken at all. I don't think so. Could be broken. I don't know why I'm even thinking, no, that's not going to be broken unless, like I said, someone just play one game, which that is going to be crazy if the person just plays one game and that average, average like 60. All right, next thing, Boston Celtics, eight straight NBA titles. No, that's not going to be broken uh, unless someone has a super, super dynasty and everyone else is just trash. That's not going to happen. Uh... Simone Biles, 19 World Gymnast Gold Medals. Probably not going to be broken as well. Uh, Cal Ripken Jr., 2,632 consecutive games played. Not, that's just crazy. No way. How many games are in the MLB season? A hundred sixty-two regular games. Ain't telling me this person, this dude right here, played two thousand six hundred thirty-two. That is crazy. No, that's not gonna be broken. UConn uh, Huskies women's basketball, a hundred eleven <laughs> games winning streak. I don't think I remember. There's a whole thing that was going on, on during that time about how historic that run was or their run is. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna be real broken. Uh, Ricky Henderson, 1,406 career stolen bases. I think out of all of these, well, let's get to rest. Uh, Michael Phelps, 28 Olympic Nope. Uh, Emmett Smith, 18,355 career rushing yards. Mm. Now, okay, here's, here, here's my take, interesting take. The Ricky Henderson, 1,406 career stolen bases. I remember I was watching like a TikTok that said you need to average this amount of stolen bases for this amount of years to even break that record. I said the MLB has 162 game, regular season games. If you play 20, which is really saying something. If you, yeah, if you play 20 plus seasons and average... Well, that's saying a lot because also you have to think about ba being on base as well. No, you could be, uh, I forgot what the specific term was. They switch runners or, you know, when a person comes out of dugout and pinch run. When someone pinch runs, I guess you can do that. But still, I think that could be broken. The Ricky Henderson and as well, maybe the Emmett Smith. Let's see. 
while we're on this subject, look at stuff up and look up Jerry Rice as well. But let's go to Emmett Smith. Emmett Smith. Uh, no, not Emmett Smith. NFL rushing, rushing leaders of all time. Because I know Barry Sanders could have broke, uh, I think, Walter Payton's record, but, you know, Barry retired early. Oh, yeah, for sure. I think... Yeah. Listen, this is the craziest part. Emmett played for 14 years. Barry played for 10 years. And he's basically 3,000 yards... From breaking that record. Or, you know, well, I mean, if Barry played, if Barry um, what played in the league uh, after Emmett or around the same time as Emmett, he could, yeah. But here's the thing. I know this is saying a, a thousand yards rushing is a lot, but... Barry played 10 years. And if he averaged 1,000 yards at four seasons and played the same amount of seasons as Emma Smith, which would be 14, he would have passed Emma Smith. But that's saying a lot, having 1,000 yards per season. That is. But also, Emma Smith had a great offensive line in the Dallas Cowboys. They have, I think... That 90s Cowboys or when Emmett was on that team, they literally had like the best offensive line of all time. Basically like Larry Allen. Um, I don't know why that's the only name I can remember, but they had a good offensive line as well. So, but yeah, Barry could have broken that. I mean, he could have probably got more than Emmett Smith possibly. But then again, a thousand yards per season or have a season with 15, 1300, 14. That's a lot, but very possibly could have. Next thing, talk about. Oh, yeah, Jerry Rice. One last thing. Uh, leaders. All time. Oh, so it is Larry Fitz. And to you. Oh, snap. No, whoa, whoa, chill. Wow, AJ Green's on this list? 44. Hey, that's still saying a lot. T.Y. Hill is that low? Okay, Jerry Rice. Yeah, Larry Fitz. Yeah, Terrell Owens. Okay, Randy Mo Isaac Bruce, really? Tony G. Yeah, he played for a while. Dang, Megatron's in there. Megatron is not Brandon Marshall got more than Megatron, did he? Wow, Kevin Johnson ain't snap. And the funny part is, he broke the uh the most amount of uh receiving yards in a season. That's the funny part. But yeah, look at this: twenty-two thousand eight hundred ninety-five, and the closest is seventeen thousand forty-nine two. With Larry Fitz and Larry Fitz played for 16 years. Well, Jerry dang near played for almost 20 years, he played for 19. But man, that is crazy! And how far is he from? He's like 5,000, basically 5,000 away from Jerry. Yeah, no one's breaking that. Mm -mm. But hey, Larry Fitz is underrated, though. I remember when he was on the cover with Troy Palomalu on uh, Madden 2000. Was it 2010? Yeah, I remember that. That's crazy. All right, this is funny. This display and Foot Locker cracks me up every single time. Giannis, DeMar, DeRozan when he was on the Spurs, LeBron, Lakers, and then... And then, who's this guy right here? Is that Blake G? Blake Griffin? 
But here's the thing. Blake Griffin, he was... I, I remember I said this in the note last year, but he was really good on the Pistons. He was good. I know Pistons fans, some, or, or a lot, or qu- quite a few, Pistons fans don't like him because and the season he got traded or the season where uh, he didn't play up to his potential, a lot of Pistons got angry and just basically forgot what he did the first season or, yeah, first season when he got on the Pistons. This dude... He was literally a pack, like a complete, I want to say complete pack, but he was like, he showed a whole bunch of vari- like varieties of himself. What I mean by that is that he did dunk. If you've seen the highlights, he did still di- dunk in the first season. He, he shot threes. He had great assists. He had phenomenal assists in his high, bro, sheesh. And that, you know, great assist. he threw great assists. Um, uh, he was an all-star as well. Like, and also he, he wasn't injured necessarily when he let the Pistons into the playoffs. Like in the last few games, I think that's when he got injured, but I know he got injured later in the season after the all-star break, but he played while injured. I know it's the playoffs, but he played while injured was giving his heart out on that court. And then I guess the next season return, he's like, man... I'm basically done. I've done all this. And basically the team hasn't really improved like that. So I'm just going to hang up out. I mean, hang it up while I'm playing on the Pistons. Or, yeah, I'm not about to do all that stuff while on the Pistons when the Pistons aren't in a, content, a contentious or being a contender in the East. Why put yourself through that? Which, fair enough. But, yeah, Blake Griffin, he was a beast on the Pistons. I don't care what anyone says. For that, you know, season particularly. Now, this post right here. Charles Barkley says he only sees four NBA teams as contenders next next season. Nuggets, 76ers, Lakers, Celtics. Agree? And I agree with this. Um, the only team that could slip in, of course, again, is the Miami Heat. Uh, like they did last, I mean, last season. But then again, they're three-point during that playoffs was amazing. I, I don't understand. It seemed like every time a player got a ball in the three point line, they would make it or they would drain it. I but the P was playing the be- their best basketball in the playoffs, which I guess well not guess. That's where you should be playing your best basketball. So if the Heat has something similar to that and if they get Damian Lillard too, they might. They definitely be in that com- conversation. Shoot, they got to playoffs. Basically, just Jimmy. So, yeah. Okay. Hold on one second. <laughs> that was very unprofessional of me, but yeah, I had to take a quick call. All right, next post. This is just sad to see. Uh, Ron Tomato score for Secret Vision episodes. Episode 1, 52%. Episode 2, 50. Episode 3, 38. 4, 38. 5, 50. And 6. The final episode got 13%. The fan 
the finale is cu currently the lowest rated MCU episode ever. I'm not. Here's the thing with me. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I have not watched an episode of any MCU television series. I haven't. I don't know why I haven't, but probably in part because of I've heard reviews people. Well, I've heard on and off reviews. Some people say, oh, this series is good. Some people say it's bad. Some people say it, it, it was okay. Some say it was great. You know, you get different opinions. Of course, you have to come up with your own opinion. But, yeah, not but. But, yeah, you have to come up with your own opinion. So, I mean, I maybe will watch it, but, man. And also, another reason why is because some of the, um, the series don't look Necessarily appealing to me like hmm, do I really want to watch WandaVision? I'm, I'm not trying to throw shots, but you know WandaVision do I really want to watch? Captain America and a winter soldier or Captain Falcon or in the winter Soldier, something along the lines of that uh, I do want to watch Moon Knight though. I Did here's the thing I did read some of his comments be comics before He even was mainstream or popular. I got his comment comics Shoot, was I in middle school or high school? When I, was, I know it was, I, I was in one of those two, but it's been it's been a while. Yeah, it's been years. I could say that for sure. I was interested in Moon Knight, but yeah, I, I'll probably watch Moon Knight. And man, I cannot wait until Blade movie comes out though. Oh man, I cannot wait. I'll be so oh, just thinking about it. That. All right, next thing. Ooh. Jets QB Aaron Rodgers agreed to take a whopping 35 million pay cut and a new adjusted contract per Tom P. The Jets inherited a two year, 110 mil deal, and Rodgers dropping it to a two year, 75 million deal contract gives them a two year window to try and win it all. And now with more money for the team to spend elsewhere. Okay, my 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 uh thoughts about this, I'm not really shocked because number one, Rodgers could be doing this to see if the Jets were willing. Well, he first probably did this initially to see if the Jets were willing to see if they would still go out for him when he's asking for all this stuff. Because remember, Aaron, Aaron Rodgers was asking, hey, I want you to sign this play. I want you to do this. I want you to give me this or I want this. Uh, You know, uh, things of that nature and people are like man a lot of people oh my god a lot of people are like man this dude's asking for a whole lot are you kidding me and these players might not even start or you know things of that nature but he but he was just testing bars to see okay how far can I push the envelope or how far do they how much do they really want me to be on this team and now that Rogers on the team and he sees like hey they really want me and they really want to win so okay you know what I'm gonna take this pay cut because you show me, I guess, loyalty in a way by doing all this for me. I'm gonna do something for you. I'm gonna do something for you. It reminds me of uh, that LeBron meme where he's like, I'll give you one more. I'll give you two more or whatever, or however it goes. But it just reminds me of that meme about, you know, about how Rodgers is, you know, taking pay cuts for the Jets to sign new players. So, I mean, that. I'm not really shocked about that. That was smart. That was smart. Next thing. All right, let's have this discussion here. So there are now nine games in November and the Big Ten. USC and UCLA are in for rude awakening. So if you don't know, by the 2024 season, not this upcoming season, the next season, 2024 to 2020 to 2025, that's when USC and UCLA joins the Big Ten. I'm pretty confident. Not this season, next season. But that's when they join the Big Ten. And as you may know, the Big Ten is mainly in the Midwest. There's Eastern teams like Rutgers, uh, Penn State, Maryland are in the East. Based like East East Coast. Uh, but like I said, mainly... but. Yeah, mainly Midwest and East Coast teams, or are only Midwest and East Coast teams. 
And you're saying UCLA is in California. So how are they going to fare in the weather when it gets to November and when it's snowing and it's cold, real cold? And of course, and people are going to make the argument, man, USC and UCLA, well, are they in the Pac-12? I just want to make sure. Fact check. Always fact check. I mean, always fact check yourself. Make sure. You try, I mean, try to. Pac-12. Oh, we're also going to get to this Colorado news as well. Pac-12. Football. Are USC and UCLA in Pac-12? Yep, they're in the Pac-12. So, of course, in Pac-12, you also got Colorado, Colorado Oregon, Utah, Oregon State, um, Washington, Washington State, which also plays in the cold or has cold weather. But how are they going to fare during um, Eastern and Midwestern type of cold? Now, I know it gets cold in Washington. In uh, Washington, or like I said, Washington, Oregon, Colorado, Utah, it does get it definitely gets cold. But also, you got the wind chill factor of the lake effect, as well as they there's literally no teams in the mid. Okay, here's here's the argument. There's no teams in the Big Ten that's gonna have warm weather during this part of the year. No team. Like how I said, uh, those were the teams that played in the cold, Washington. But you also had in the Pac-12, Pac-12, you have Arizona, Arizona State, uh, Cal, Stanford. Um, what, what, what other teams were there? I see. Uh, okay. Just those. What? What did I name? Uh, one, two, three. Four are the teams that there's four teams that play that's basically warm all year round. Possibly it does get cold there, yeah, but it's mainly warm or it's you know comfortable weather. But like I said, in the Big Ten during this month, nowhere in the Big Ten is warm or probably comfortable weather. I can't. No, Nebraska, nope. Iowa, nope. Minnesota, nope. Northwestern, nope. Michigan, no. Michigan State, no. Ohio State, no. Illinois, 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 no. Indiana, no. Maryland, no. Penn State, no. Rutgers, no. I apologize if I'm missing a team, but yeah, that's all the teams I can think of right now that's in the Big Ten. Wisconsin, no. No, could possibly be missing a couple teams, but those I'm just saying, none of those teams have comfortable weather during this time, so they're not going to get a rest at all. And also, people can make the argument, oh, but this is their all-time record against these certain teams. Those matches, maybe, I don't know, because I'm not about to look up every single Big Ten opponent that they played against. Well, I couldn't. They're extreme. But those, I wouldn't be shocked if those were on neutral sites or in warm weather climates when they played them, which I'm not taking anything away from because they beat them, point blank, period. Warm weather, cold weather, doesn't matter. They beat them. So... And if it's warm weather, better for the colder team. And they still got beat. So, yeah. So, but during this time, I don't know how uh, USC and USA, UCLA is going to fare. I know they're going to have home games as well. Uh, but, I don't know. We'll see. But I think they're going to fare. They, they're going to be okay. Because then again, people, you also got to think about these recruits that these colleges are recruited from, not all of them. I mean, all, not all these teams recruit people from the East Coast or from no, up North or North. They recruit them from West and South as well. You think all these players from, shoot, name a school, 
uh, Michigan, Iowa, uh, Ohio State come from the north or east? No, some of them come from south and west. So you really can't make that argument like that, but it's still an argument nonetheless. Next thing. All right, final one one. This is the first draw of the women's US US United States women's national team since the 2015 World Cup. Wow. That just shows the testament of how great US women's national soccer team is. The first World Cup draw since 2015. And I know World Cup is held like what every Four years, yeah, every four years or so. Um, but still, that's just saying something. That is just saying something. And then get and guess who it was against the Netherlands. Which <laughs> the funny part is the men's loss to the North Netherlands, and I think was it the knockout round in the men's World Cup or something like that. I know they got they lost them and they were out of the World Cup. So yeah. Next thing, last last dream. We're talking about the Kylian Mbappe deal of the $776 million contract offer. And it's really reported by Bleacher Report, but by this guy right here specifically, uh, that he rejects the contract and he's already, uh, and PSG believes that uh, Mbappe has already agreed to terms with Real Madrid. Uh, now, of course, if it happened, if that, if, uh, that deal happened after, or that person or that guy, L, hello, I apologize for saying his name wrong, wrong, but if it happened after, you know, his deal with Real Madrid, then of course he's still going to go with Real Madrid. But if it happened before he even made the deal, I don't understand. And it, I really don't understand. I mean, I do and I don't because I don't because do Lily said just play for us for one year, even though you're in your prime, your best, you know, doing your best and football right now, soccer, football, doing your best in football right now. Um, I, you, you are wasting a year of your prime. You know, in this league that may not have the that doesn't have the best players, but at the same time, dude, this is generational right here. This is that type of money, and it's only for one single year. You just wasting one year. If you if if you're at your prime and one year, and that one year really did something to you, and just what and you just waste it like you waste it all or something like that, then maybe I. I don't know. You, it's hot take. Maybe you're probably not as great like that. If one year in a terrible league just reconstructs everything for you, and next thing you know, the next year you join an actual real league and you do your do terribly in that league. Maybe you're not like that. Possibly. Hey, hold on now. I'm not saying Mbappe is not that like that, but I'm just saying if. That's the kid. Dude, it's just one year. Now, I'm saying this if this was before. This deal was set on the table before. You know, it's just one year. And now I understand there's possibly like politics and things of, you know, do you want, you know, things like that. But if, if that's also another reason why, I can't completely understand, you know, what politics, stuff like that. But. If it's just if if the sole reason why he didn't join is because I'll be wasting a year in my prime or I'll be doing as much or whatever. Come on now. It's just one year. And you're going right back. That should not deconstruct anything you've worked hard for at all. You should be even going harder. And showing these guys why you are like that. Next thing. We're talking about movies. Oh, so we're not just talking about anime and um, sports. We're talking about movies. Like uh, last week, we did talk to, to Spider Man about Spider Man Across the Spider Verse. But next thing, uh, Mattel executives reveal 
They want to essentially create a cinematic universe following the success of Barbie with 14 properties already in active development, including uh, Barney, wow, Polly Pocket, Hot Wheels, Magic 8 Ball, Uno, Rock'em Sock'em Robots, uh, Christmas Balloon, Thomas and Friends, American Girl, Viewmaster, Matchbox, Wishbone, Major Matt Mason, and all, and lastly, Masters of the Universe. Now, I do not know about all these properties, but, uh, how are you gonna, well, of course, you can cram Barney, Polly Pocket, you can create one as well. Hot Wheels, you definitely can. You can create like a speed racer type of Hot Wheels. Something like, along the lines of that. Definitely. Magic 8-Ball. I guess you can create something like that. Like, you can do like a Halloween theme or a horror theme. Not really necessarily horror because people like, it's Magic 8-Ball. But you can do something like, I do you understand my, um, my vision with this? It's like spooky or, you know, or it could be like comedic thing. Like, you say something in Magic 8 Ball says something totally ran I mean different, you know, in a comedic way, comedic fact. You could do, you know, something like that. So you can. Uno. How are you gonna create a movie about Uno? <laughs> what, what, what what's gonna be the premise of it? Like like what what, what are we doing? Uh, Uno Oh, this person drops down the car. Oh, you forgot to say Uno. Draw, draw another car. Oh, draw four. Wild. Skip back to me. Well, if you're playing, you know, one of another one of a person. Oh, reverse. Yeah, like, I don't know how they're gonna do Uno movie. But yeah, Rock and Saka. Yeah, Christmas balloon. Don't know what that is. Thomas and Friends. I don't, is that Thomas the Trank? I don't, Thomas the Trank. Uh, Thomas uh, the Train, I don't know. Thomas, uh, maybe possibly. American Girl, same thing like Barbie and Polly Pocket. You can do something like that. Viewmaster, I don't necessarily know what that is. Matchbox, heard of that. Wishbone, don't know. Richmond Mason, Mason, don't know. Master Universe, don't know. So, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next, Jeff Teague says, he has James Harden over Dwayne Wade all time. Do hmm. My thoughts about that. Does anyone have something here? No, nothing here. Okay. Um my thoughts about that. My thoughts about that. James Harden over Dwayne Wade. Here's the thing. The Wayne Wade's prime did not last long. It really didn't. His prime possibly was 04 to... Well, actually, I don't know. 04 to 10. I I firmly believe he was not in his prime. He definitely was not in his prime when LeBron came to Miami. I don't think he was. I think that's a little bit after his prime. But the crazy thing is Dwayne Wade reached his prime at a young age or a young time in his career, which is crazy. Um, but yeah, like I said, I firmly believe he was not in his prime when LeBron was there. And Chris Bosh as well. Chris Bosh was still good, but, and Dwayne Wade as well, but he was not in his prime. But, uh, back to this question, uh, Jeff Teague says he has James Harden and Dwayne Wade all the time. Um, I can agree to that. Because if we're thinking about their primes, well, also got to think about the league. The league is more of a scoring type of league now. But if we're talking about, well, scoring makes you have you win games. You could also say defense as well, but you win games by scoring. And James Harden was a thousand percent score. So, yeah, I can I can agree with James Harden over Dwayne Wade all the time because. James Harden was that dude. And the thing is, James Harden got, uh, I don't want, mm, he got a lot, a lot of flack during his prime or, you know, when he was with the Rockets because they keep people saying ball haul, things of that. But people, people really didn't appreciate his greatness. They really didn't. Because do you remember that streak where he had like, what, like, was it 40, 50, 60 point? Or that stretch where he had 
like 30 or 40 plus points. It was a crazy stretch. And people were saying, oh, he's a ball hog. Oh, he does this, he does that. People did not like him. Not really. Which, uh, that's them. But, he, he, I would say James Harden is underrated when he was in his prime or when he was that dude. I will say underrated because people, people do talk about it, but people undermined it by saying, you know, like I said, ball hog, things of that nature. Next thing. Uh oh. Mm -mm. Houses. We're going to be looking at house. House P. House Space P. All right. Yep. <laughs> this is not correct. We're, we're, I mean, correct, but let's look at this. Now, I'm a fan if the house was... If, this is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. But um, I like the brick. I think this brick right here. Yeah. Right here on the walls. Right here. I like how it's all... I mean... You have natural light. You can get natural lighting. The beautiful plants. I like that ultra modern look. That I think that that probably is my favorite type of look. And this is an ultra modern type of house. But I would love it even more if it was black. But if it's black, I know it'd be extremely hot, extremely hot, extremely over there. Because you can definitely see the sun rising. Oh yeah, it's gonna be hot. But Man, when it's nighttime, it will go beautiful. Everything's all lit up. I'll like it if it's black. What most of these houses you'll see. Another one. This, I would like this house if it was black. This is a beautiful house. Look at the plants right here on the side. The tree. Don't know what the heck that is, but it's there. Um, I like the what is that that's not oak i'm trying to sound sophisticated i don't know what that is but uh i like this color actually why am i look okay white looks nice with this yeah never mind i like white with this but i still think it'll look good with black too but white looks nice white looks nice next oh oh woo 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 the scenery, scenery, scenery. It, this kind of reminds me of my backyard. The trees aren't this tall. Well, uh, actually, I take <laughs> actually I take that back. No, I'm looking out. Uh, these trees probably are still tall. Actually, I don't know. I don't know. But the trees, compared to my backyard, the trees aren't. Doesn't all the trees don't look the same? Or it seems like all these trees are the same tree or the same type of breed of tree or whatever, however you say it. But, yeah, the scenery, like how you can get that. I love that view. I love, like, natural lighting. I like how it's black. Like I said, I love black. Maybe I'll change the sheets or color. I don't like that type of texture design or style. I don't know something about that. I just don't like it. But, yeah, this kind of reminds me somewhat of, like, the Incredibles type of style. Yeah. Was that night that 1950s type of style? Or how, I forgot the exact, I saw a TikTok, another TikTok about that. About the type of style that Incredibles had. That's a beautiful style. That's actually, that is one of my favorite styles. It kind of reminds me similar to that. It's kind of like an ultra, ultra modern, isn't it? Like a 1950s modern or ultra modern look. Now this is beautiful. This right here reminds me of like, like this should be in a movie, uh, like they're in a different type of universe, and then there's like this queen coming down or this, um, yeah, queen or like a princess coming down or something like that, and then you got like maybe the prince or the uh guy character or whatever. 
standing right here. And then he has like the person, the guide right next to him while she's walking down the stairs. Like I have like a whole scene in my head with this picture right here. This picture is beautiful. Like I said, it looks like something from a different universe. Yeah. It could be like somewhere in the clouds or in the sky or as well. Definitely like what or in the water, something like that underwater. Like, extremely crazy. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And nice chandelier too. Pretty good. Woo wee! Now this is the type of stuff I am talking about right here. Look at that. Look at maybe too much wood. I don't know if this necessarily called be called wood, but too much of this right here. Uh and also like right here, you know, right here, this type of uh material what material design or a little bit too it's too much of that, but tone it down a little bit. Amazing. Now this is interesting. This right here reminds me of the movie Coraline. Not the bit specifically, but these type of designs. These swirly things, these oh these uh circles, pattern, the lines connect into the circles. If for some reason it reminds me of Coraline. And there's probably like a theory why it reminds me of that or some someone's probably tell me why I think of Coraline when I think of this, because I know it's probably like a scene in a movie that's kinda similar to this. And I think there is. But yeah, it reminds me of Coraline. I thought this was neat. Now this this is why I'm talking now this the other more as I was talking no 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 no. This right here. This is what I'm talking about. That was loud. Apologize, headphone users or earbuds. Or ear yeah, earbud users, but this is absolutely beautiful. The scenery in the back looks like New York or something like that. The paintings. The paintings oh minimalistic, but still nice. You got a little, you know, greenery right there. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I'm not really a big fan of greenery, but you know, it well you still should have some, you know, to live put color or livening it up, livening it up a little bit. But I like the um stove right here. Uh, this is, I've got top stove right here, but you know, he and stuff like that. Got the oven right here. You got this nice slick black counter, gray or black countertop right here. I don't know what this, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's black or dark brown or whatever. It still looks nice. Oh, this, that ultra. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh, mm, 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 mm. Beautiful, absolutely stunning, beautiful. I would love to live some, love to live in something like this right here. Next, all right. How many things? Wow. Okay. Wow. Wow. All right. I'm not gonna talk about all these, cause how, how long have I been streaming for? 54, wow, 54 minutes, yeah, this should be way too long, oh, okay, uh, 54 minutes, wow, that's a long time, I did not know that, I did not know that, all right, 54 minutes, okay, um, let's talk about a few things that are, like, recent, recent, um, because, you know, we're talking about recent news, and things get old, you're like, bro, that happened a while ago, or... So, the, uh, I don't know why I just blanked out. The, you know, uh, Buffs, the Buffaloes, University of Colorado, is returning back to the Big 12 in 2024. Sources says this type of, uh, the, from this source, after 12 seasons with the Pac-12, Pac-12, um, yeah, so it's returned back to the Big 12. I think that's a great decision. My reason why I think it's a great decision is with uh, that the um, why I think it's a great decision why the bus Buffalo's University of Colorado's returned back to the Big Twelve is because the Pac Twelve right now it's unstable. We do not know what the future is going to look like. First of all, we don't even know if Washington, or Oregon is going to stay in the uh, Pac Twelve. They also has been so reports that they think about moving to the Big Ten, Big Ten as well. 
you know, as USC and UCLA. So it's unstable right now and it's uncertainty. And I think Pac-12 isn't earning that much or, you know, there's TV deals and some teams are earning more or something along the lines of that than other. It's just a whole bunch of jumbled up things that are going on with the Pac-12, which what Pac-12 needs to like, we, I wouldn't say, I, w- I wouldn't say rebrand itself, but it needs to add newer teams or add something because what the Big 12 did is add this season added, um, I, they, I know they added University of Houston and I think they added UCF as well and Cincinnati, I think. These are the... I know University of Houston. I think Cincinnati wasn't on the Big 12. Was Cincinnati on the Big 12? Big 12. Okay, that's college. That looks like hoops. Uh, yep. So I was right. Oh, wait. Okay. Yep. Oh, yeah. Texas is going to SEC as well. Uh, and University of Oklahoma. No. Yeah. Boomer Sooner as well. Which they definitely should because those two are huge fan bases. And not saying Big 12 can't big fan bases, you know. But yeah. These three new teams entered the Big 12. The Big 12 is trying to rebrand, not rebrand itself, but I'm trying to find the right word, but you understand what I'm saying? Like they're, they're doing new, they're adding new things to stay relevant or saying, Hey, we're still here too. We still a good conference to watch a decent conference, you know, to support. So good for them. Sean Payton. Okay. So all this other stuff. Okay. And then, you know, uh, what I said earlier. Okay, we can talk about that next time. Talk about that next time. This was from the latest episode of Bleach. Remember I told you how the manga and the anime is they're not necessarily identical, but they did they did their thing and they paid attention and they made sure that they gave Bleach a great ending. A great ending, you know, with the with their with Bleach's last arc. Or, you know, do put in that work. So, yeah, watch the anime. Watch Bleach. Watch it, please. Oh, man. Great. All right. We'll talk about that later. Shohei Itani News. Played against the Tigers. And he absolutely whooped them. Shohei. He had multiple home runs as well as becoming the first player in MLB history to throw a shutout in a season. He hit. 12 plus home runs. He has 36. As well as weather. Great news. Um, yeah. Like I said, first career shutout. And also, he had a couple of home runs as well. So, I don't know if it's. I don't know if it's necessarily. If he had one against. Because the Tigers, they played a doubleheader. I don't know if he had one each doubleheader or he just had one. If you just had two in one of the double header games, but nonetheless, great, amazing. Like I said, hey, I'm a Shohei and Tani fan, not gonna lie. Wish my team would do something to get him, which they'll have to give almost everything, but and also it wouldn't be fair to him to spend the team be trash. I mean, the team is trash, anyways, but it'll be even worse, so yeah. All right, Peacock has lost 1.3, 1. 1.36. Blah, blah, blah. Wow, what is up with me today? Peacock has lost 1.36 billion dollars this year. The stream platform is expected to lose 3 billion in 2023. Okay, a couple things. Uh, well, number one, the pandemic is over. Not everyone is cooped up in their house. So, of course, they're going to lose subscriptions because people got other things to do. And um, there was another comment that I saw on this thread. There was a comment I saw on this thread that was... Uh, okay, this comment right here. This is what happens when there are too, ma- too many streaming services. Some get left in the dust. That is true. That is true. There's a lot of streaming services. Every, like, almost every TV station is trying to get a streaming service or has... 
or is working with the parent company or you know they're combined they do a whole bunch of things there's a lot of streaming companies and they're you know not everything not everyone's gonna buy from a streaming company but the crazy thing about this is that peak oh my peak got like so much advertisement i don't know if you guys remember but during the olympics time peacock was saying or yeah P, they were just advertising peacock like crazy i remember like i don't know what how i i mean for wrestling i don't watch i don't really watch wrestling i don't watch wrestling but i do remember i saw something for like wrestling where wrestlemania or something like that they're saying peacock there's peacock had so much advertisement so much going so, I mean, I'm not really shocked that they're losing that much, but that's a lot. Of, I didn't expect them to lose that this much. Uh, and last thing we're going to talk about, because the rest of this stuff we can talk about at a different time, is that Sally, 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 Sally. Hold on, let me clip this. Can I, let me see. Clip, clip, clip. Clippity, clip, clip. All right. Sally... Sally Jalen Ramsey's uh, Sally Jalen Ramsey is expected to miss six six point six to eight weeks in the NFL season, or just six to eight weeks of football in general. Jalen Ramsey expected to miss, and this is such a blow to the Dolphins. Now the Dolphins is a good team, even when when they were without Ramsey last season, they were a good team. But Ramsey gives it like that extra push, that extra, you know, takes them a tier above. Uh, I do I believe that the Dolphins were playing for a contention spot for Super Bowl? No, because they, well, no, actually, actually, I don't know, possibly, but the AFC is really stacked right now. You got the Jaguars that are up and coming, you, can, you already got the Chiefs, they're already in him. You already got the Bill, I mean, the Bengals, and I kind of alluded, or I just said this, but no matter what people said, the Bills are still a great team as well. Uh, the Chargers, I don't know. Chargers are off and on. I don't know. But, and maybe also the Broncos as well. If You know, if everything goes as according to plan, the Broncos too. So the AFC is really stacked right now with the elite teams, so... Jets, I can't believe I forgot the Jets. The Jets, everything works out with the Jets as well. So, yeah, the AFC is totally stacked right now. Um, but this is such sad news. I hope everything works great for him, recovery goes smoothly, and he returns quickly and safely as possible for the Dolphins, so we can see that team do great things. All right, next thing. All right, that's all for Twitter. Also, I just want to say this. Twitter is not uh, a reliable... I mean, for some things, it could be for, like, NFL reports because they actually are... Well, for some articles and things like that, they are reliable, but don't just go off of a thing on Twitter actually do some research behind that which I gotta I'm not gonna lie I gotta do more on but just don't go off of what Twitter says because some people just go off what Twitter says or any social media says and just run without run with it without doing further research which it's not good always gotta do always should do further research unless it's like I guess reliable source that I want to like you already know that's like reliable yeah. Last thing we're going to be talking about. Water. Is the latest episode of Jujutsu Kaisen. Latest episode. This is crazy. Why is this going like that? That's so odd. That's so weird. All right, let's go back. The latest episode, Jujutsu Kaisen. Let me give up a quick recap or my thoughts of it. So, this is not funny at all. This is terrible. But tell me why they started this episode where they left off from the last episode. 
<laughs> they showed another episode of Rico getting, let's just say, disintegrated. Let's we're using a different word, almost kind of like a synonym of the word kill, basically. But yeah, yeah. let's just say disintegrate. We're just gonna say disintegrate. Because kill is like, ah, it's at your face. Like, ah, which it was. Basically at your face, in your face. But yeah. They showed a different angle of Rico getting disintegrated. And the crazy part is, is that the angle was that they did a zoom in. <laughs> they did a zoom in of her. Of the blood pouring out of her, which is very graphic, which is, yeah, which is graphic. Them Jujutsu Kaisen, Kaisen anime directors were on something else during this, during that part. I don't know what they're, I don't know. But yeah, start off like that. Next scene is when, um, of course, like I said, now of course Toji came, gun, and then uh. Uh, Suguru, uh, was like, hey, I'm about to, we, we about to fight. And then Toji's like, all right, bet. We about to do some hands. And that's what they did. They, that's what they really did. Um, well, also showing me about Juju, about how Toji is or how Toji approaches thing, not approaches thing, but how Toji is or how, how the anime did it is that, this dude actually grabbed his, I mean, act was actually, while the dragon was getting Toji, which is what this uh, scene right here is illustrating, uh, this to Toji grabbed his, uh, his weapon, his firearm, and started shooting bullets right at Suguru. And I was like, I was kind of thrown aback because I'm like, wow, that's, that, that, that's straightforward. That's straight to the point. This dude had his firearms and start shooting them, bu them bullets, like pop, pop, pop. I was like, Whoa, that's crazy, and um, this uh, oh man, I can't believe I forgot. But this is where uh, Riku was supposed to be with one with that thing, so everything is all up in order in Jujutsu Kaisen. I think it also has the world, so now they're entering this place, and then right here in this scene, so um. During this scene, Toji, Toji and uh, uh, Suguru is having dialogue. And the dialogue is about, okay, how that Suguru is basically asking Toji, like, how the heck did you even get here in the first place? What did you do to the maid? Uh, and also there should be other bodyguards there, bodyguards, or how did you even get in here? Because we would have sensed your, I think, introduced guys called Cursed Spirits or... They, your spirit or something or something along like like lines of that like and we were we should be able to sense you how could we just say sense you at all and uh told you was saying how he can suppress it or you know that that purple thing on him like he swallows it or whatever and he does stuff to like suppress it so you can't sense me coming at all or you can't sense any i don't have any cursed energy at all right now or as it as you know he was and then, oh wow, that's jumping way ahead. All right, now still, uh, I should have took a picture of it. But, um, and then they start to fight. Uh, to Toji is about that. This dude loves to throw hands. He was giving Suguru the one, two. He was giving Suguru a battle. He was saying, yeah, I'm that guy. You cannot touch me. Uh, so... They had this one scene. I, sh I this should have been a picture, but um, they had of an old Jap Japanese um horror story, or like a scary tale, um, about how this woman, which is interesting as well, because I know it's a scary story, scary tale about this woman. Say asking strangers like, "Am I pretty? Am I pretty? Whatever." And if you answer, 
she's going to attack you or come after you. I don't know if, I think if you, if, if, even if it's good or bad, she's still going to come after you. So it's like a lose-lose situation. But, uh, yeah, like, she showed up and asked Toji in this weird scene. I don't know. Was, I, I really understand that scene necessarily at all. But she asked Toji, am I pretty or am I whatever, right? And Toji's like, nah, like, you're not my type. I think that's what he said. Like, you're not my type of I don't know. I'm not interested. And then she kind of cut Toji a little bit, but Toji did a couple things, and then it was whatever with that. But then, but then, they get down, I think, to the base basement down below where they went to this different section. And then you just see Toji just slicing and dicing Suguru up. Like, this dude, he... Oh my, he did almost what he did to Suguru, we did to Gojo. I mean, what he did to Gojo, we almost did to Suguru. This dude was. St- oh my goodness. You, you you just see a big axe on uh, Toji. I mean, Suguru's chest afterwards, and Toji's like, I could have killed you, but uh, disintegrated you, but I decided not to. Because that'll be. A lot more on my plate to have to deal with, or you know, I don't want to deal with that. But yeah, you're alive. So he captured uh, the girl, uh, the girl meaning Uriko. He, uh, he put her inside that purple guy's mouth. I don't know how, or the purple guy swallowed her up, and then he gave him to the star religious group representative. This dude right here, and uh, also with. Um, Toji, which there's going to be a picture of this, well, kind of a picture of this guy, but uh, the guy from the earlier scenes that was in contact with Toji, tell him things like, hey, uh, t- not necessarily tell him, what to, tell him what to do, but, you know, the guy that was on the phone with Toji while I was inside that restaurant. So he was with Toji, and they were just talking about how, uh, the, how the payment is going to work out, how it's going to go, and as well as, you know that this can, like, disrupt all of society, right? Basically, us killing this, I mean, oh, wow, disintegrating this girl. And the guy, I'm not pretty sure this guy right here is like, hey, if it happens, it, happens, it was meant to happen, or something along like that. So, that was this scene. And in this scene right here, they're just talking about, okay, uh, to- Toji mentioned, why do you do, why Toji do with that maid? And he said, well, because I just, I did this way because of these specific reasons. Um, this guy right here. He said, yeah, I did it because of this specific reasons. And something along, something about private jet or he owns private jet and things like that. So they took care of the mayor, did something with the mayor. And I think they talked about something, another thing as well. But then Toji's like, hey, you're going to treat me out to something to eat. And... Uh, this guy right here is like this businessman. Let's call him businessman. Businessman was like, uh, nah, I just, uh, I really don't want to be in contact with you like that. Like, we're just work, basically work buddies, work friends. So, you know, I was like, dang, all right. And then, as Toji is actually heading out of the place, like, you know, they were, when he was talking to the guy, he was heading out of that office, that building, you know, walking upstairs. But when he was actually trying to leave the uh, property, the actual property, guess who appeared? Gojo! Gojo appeared. And oh my goodness, you had crazy, crazy, crazy Gojo show up. Uh, and this, he was, in this part, Gojo was talking about how he was able to live. He said he used like negative energy and then negative energy throughout his body. And then he's like something about suppressing and then a whole bunch of like positive energy comes out. And then, you know, when there's neg- enough negative, positive comes out, something along the lines of that, you know, that's what he was basically talking about. But, you know, he survived when, and he did all this when uh, Toji was cutting his neck. That's when he, you know, did all of this, which is crazy. But, yeah, and then they start to fight, and then Gojo is all, like, enlightened, or he it's all about enlightenment. 
about Gojo was saying was basically talking about I think he was talking about like he it like he could be the best person like the best basic person in the series like the you know the guy of the series like he he's better than everyone else I think that's what he was talking about but he was in line like man this right here is a rush right here like I, I find, like it feels like he knows all the answers now and figure out all the answers it seems like but he's basically enlightened in this part so like I said they start to bow start to fight blah, 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 dialogue and then uh, you see Gojo the like the final part of the battle remember how I mentioned about negative positive energy He's talking about how you saw all this other stuff. You saw the red beam and the blue beam. Now I'm about to introduce you to this purple beam that no one else really has ever seen except Gojo's clan. And then bam! He shot to and went through Tojo's stomach basically to the side of his stomach. But it basically went through, took care of his left arm and a chunk of his body. And then you just see the blood start coming out. And he's like, man, I'm done for, huh? And then Gojo is like, hey, any last words? And Toji originally said, no, none. But then this happened uh, a few times throughout the first two episodes. I know this happened. No, I think it happened once. Twice, I don't know. It happened, I know it happened at least once in the last couple episodes. Where told you remembers a kid, and the kid is his. He said, "He says, hey Gojo, I have a kid, and he's gonna be sold off to this clan, and do what you may with that information." But yeah, I'm just letting you know, I have a child, and you know, he's getting sold to the clan, and then, bloom, he drop, dead, and then during this scene. Okay, wow, I took pictures, took a picture in this scene, but I didn't upload it. Okay, so then Gojo got back Rico from that, you know, guy or from that area and said, and told, and um, Suguru was apologized to Gojo. He, he's saying, nah, I really messed up. And uh, Gojo's like, no, I actually messed up. I, this was all based on my fault. Uh, he said, basically, he lost sight. Like, I wouldn't say lost sight, but, you know, just getting like, oh, I lost sight or, you know, I just got blindsided or whatever, right? Like, this is absolutely my fault. Just like, absolutely my fault. And then, um, this part, I think this is where, like I said, I'm an anime only. I haven't read the manga. But this is the part where I think probably Suguru starts to change his thought process maybe a little bit it starts to warp a little bit because then right here gojo's like hey what happens if we disintegrate these people behind us right here this cult what will happen should we do it suguru's like no nah, don't do it no nah, i think it's worthy but then Gojo starts talking. I forgot what Gojo was saying specifically, but kept talking, kept talking. And you see see the drawing, you see the animation starts to change up a little bit. Where Suguru is having like that moment where it's like he's questioning, like oh like oh man, I don't even know. Should we I actually think we should? And then I don't know if he actually did or didn't from the scene. But yeah. And then the episode basically ended off with, I think it ended off, but this thing right here, the purple thing, coming up to Suguru and call him mom, mommy or whatever. But uh, yeah, but that was basically like the ending, which is kind of like a somewhat dark ending. But what I find interesting, now tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Manga readers. Now don't spoil it for me. Don't spoil the rest. But just say yes or no. Is it the reason why it's called Heading Inventory Premature Death Arc? Specifically the Premature Death Arc is because Luke, 
Roku, Roko passes away. She dies. Is that the reason why it's called premature premature death? Because she wasn't supposed to die? Or it's like something along the lines of like she wasn't supposed to die at this moment or this wasn't supposed to happen. This, you know, this is young. This is early. Like, you know, is that the reason why it's called premature death? Oh, did I, did I was that a big brain moment? Someone please let me know. But yeah, that's how it ends. Basically. Um, yeah, that, that, um, man, that was kind of a dark, that was a dark episode, but yeah, Jujutsu Kaisen's do its thing. It's doing its thing. I give this episode, um, well, actually, I don't want to give this episode rating. I, you know, I could, but I, I don't, I don't want to, but this was a good episode, though. It was. But yep. That was what was going on. So, I'm about to end the stream for today. Uh, I've been talking for a while. Uh, I'm starting to get used to. As I continue to talk, I'm starting to get more comfortable. I'm, I, you know, I'm so happy. I'm starting to get more comfortable. Um, but, yeah. Uh, I'm about to end the stream. Thank you who, whenever you watch this or whoever hear, hears this. Uh, yeah. Uh, hope you having a great and wonderful day, a blessed day, uh, and I'm out of here. All right. See ya. Thank you for listening and watching. Have a blessed day. Peace.